you uh, have your Bibles there, you might want to open them at Genesis chapter 1. Now remember the key point we are going to take up for our uh, next few days here on Dinosaur Island is that geology really grew out of the thoughts of many Christian clergymen. They had to have certain beliefs in order to even begin geology. Um, I was rather surprised when I looked into the history of geology and found so many reverend gentlemen um, involved in the fact of digging up fossils. And they were the ones who invented words like geology, as I've said previously. So what we're going to do is have a look at Genesis and see what it says and ask this question. Given that this is the real history of the world, what would it produce for us to look for? The reason I'm doing that is simple. You and I live in a world in which the average person thinks this is a religious book. It has nothing to do with geology. There is, it's not factual. It's purely about the things you believe that don't have to be real at all. Um, Genesis chapter 1 verse 1. In the beginning God did what? Created. Created the heavens and the earth. And the earth was without form and void and darkness was on the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God moved on the face of the waters. And God said, let there be light. And there was light, and God saw the light that it was good, and God had divided the light from the darkness, and God called the light day, and the darkness he called night, and the evening and the morning were the first day. By the way, what we are actually doing can take a title. Um, Genesis Geology. Over the next few days, we're going to try and look at the creation story and ask a very practical question. You see, at this point, everybody in the world has to make a choice. Do you put your faith in the scientists who weren't there, like Charles Lyell, Charles Darwin, and the current professor of geology, and their theories about what it was like, or do you choose to put your faith in the word of God who was there, and then think about what might have resulted, because that's the real history of the world. We're going to talk about the six days of creation. Did you notice something about Genesis chapter 1 verses 1 to 5? It says the Spirit of, the God, of God hovered over the surface of the waters. And the earth was without form and empty, void. There was nothing on it. You see, the picture you can draw from this is something like that. On that first day, there's no shape. Oh, I know many people think that God was sitting up there and the angels had gone through the scripture choruses for a million times and he had to find something new to do and there was a spare spot over there in the universe so he filled it up with a nice round marble called planet Earth. No way. You see, there was not even a space. The biblical picture of the creation is actually not anything like the Big Bang Theory or what most people think about. The biblical picture is there was not even nothing there. Please don't think about it for too long. You're liable to leak out the ears, right? It is difficult for you to get your brains around this. And then the Lord made the heavens, the space, and he made the earth. Now, if you're thinking about this, we could launch out into astronomy here because we have an interesting word for heavens there. Ponder it for a moment. Think of any other English words that it might be like, and you get a big idea of why later on in the scriptures it said the Lord stretched out the heavens. Oh, but you see, we're talking about the earth today. The earth was without form and it was empty and the Spirit of God hovered over the surface of the waters. Now, I'm glad the uh, biblical picture used water there because if it had said anything else, ice or land, it would have been wrong. You see, if you go to school and you learn all about water and ice and dirt and solids and gases, you learn one thing about liquids. They have a volume... They have a mass, but they have no shape. Because you can take a glass of water that's round and pour it into a square glass, and the water becomes what? Square. square. But if you put that square glass in the refrigerator and drop the temperature to zero, and then you take the square water out, it's very hard to fit in a round hole, isn't it? Because it's now ice, and solids have a fixed shape. And the Spirit of God hovered over the surface of the waters. Now, at the moment, you don't know anything about what's on the interior. So let's just guess. And we're guessing in the light of what happened a little bit later. There's several things you do know, that there's no life there at all. There's nothing on it. It's empty. It's got no fixed shape to start with. And by the end of the day, 
The Lord said, let there be light, and there was light, and the evening and the morning were the first what? Okay. A um, couple of points. Would you go to John's Gospel, chapter 1, please? You see, uh, the day we're meeting on, as we start our uh, week of field trips here, is Sunday. And the day that's being talked about here happens to be Sunday. You see, the first day of the very first week, of the very first month, of the very first millennium, is the day on which the Lord made the heavens and the earth. And if you look at John chapter 1, you'll find out something else about this Lord. In the beginning was the? And the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And by the time you get to verse 3, it says, All things were made by Him, and without Him was nothing made that was made. And by the time you get to verse 14 and 15, it says, And the Word became flesh, and dwelt amongst us. And who is this Word? Jesus Christ. Now look, don't be surprised we call Sunday, the first day of the week, the Lord's Day, because this is the day the Lord made. And we shall be glad and... Oh, you see, so this has got something to do with the whole of Christianity. You see, on that first day of the week, the Lord shone light into the darkness. So don't be surprised, verse 4 and 5 of John says, and the light shone in the darkness, and the darkness could not contain it, or it couldn't comprehend it. So on day one of creation, you've got the Spirit of God hovering over the surface of the waters. There's no mention of dry land. You have no idea how big the heavens are. But that little clue later that the Lord is stretching them out might give you a bit of a clue. But we're not interested in atmospheric geology. We want to deal with the rocks that are on terra firma. Trouble is it wasn't too firm back in the uh, beginning. It had no shape and it was empty. But by the end of the day, it had to have a shape. Because you see, it's equally divisible into one half that's light and one half that's dark. And the only shape you can actually do that to, if you think about, is a nice round blob. You can't do that to a square because you have one day, four evenings, and one night. Try it sometimes. Cubes don't work. Rectangles don't work. Only some sort of sphere you can do this to. Okay, no mention of dry land. The earth itself is covered by water, which uh, should give you a bit of a surprise. For many people, they don't realize that Noah's flood is the second time the earth was covered with water, not the first. The first time was on the first day of the first week of the first month of the first millennium, the day the Lord made. Actually, follow up that a moment. On the day the Lord made, the light shone in the darkness. Can you see a spiritual principle coming out of that? Yeah. Now, don't be surprised when it comes to geology or astronomy, the devil has done his best to get rid of the first day of the week because the first day of the week in Genesis is a picture of Jesus Christ his light shining in the darkness. Actually, what day did his light shine in the darkness on the, on the brains of the disciples? When did they know he really was the Lord? Which day of the week? The first day of the week. Can you see the connection? If you can get rid of that first day, then you can demolish everything that's based on it from there. Oh, but geology, do you think there were any fossils being formed on the first day of the week? Oh, we're now in the second day in terms of the picture. And there's no fossils being formed on the second day either because there is nothing living yet. The earth started without form. It started empty. There's not the slightest hint that there's anything that's going to be living yet. 